Hello everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Rock to Your Studio and today I'm sharing with you my Pick a Stick Challenge Altered Tag and my Pick a Stick Challenge ATC for the month of July 2019. Time got away from me. It is like the end of the month and I still haven't completed these challenges. So I figured I would just get them done and get them put together in the same video and I would be happy. <laughs> I usually try to spread them out during the month but you know it just didn't work that way. So I'm starting with the altered tag challenge. This is a regular Manila shipping tag and the first prompt was copy. And I had this photocopy of a image of a girl and um, it's from unsplash.com, which is a site that you can get photos for inspiration and use without copyright. You need to kind of worry about that a little bit. So um, it's a copy, it's a photocopy. There's a lot of different ways you can interpret that prompt. Of course, Pick a Stick Challenge is all about one word prompts that are randomly drawn. So we draw some sticks, we provide challenges each month, and there are three challenges, an art journal page, a tag, and an ATC. And I will link in the iCard ab above my uh, art journal page for this month. And you can go look at that if you haven't seen the July art journal page. So the second prompt was monoprint and rather than actually monoprinting I decided to use a monoprint. Uh, these pieces of paper are from monoprinting sessions that I've had in the past. Um, the one on that I'm putting on right now was made with a stencil uh, from Stencil Girl. I believe it was a club stencil a while back. Of course, all the products I use are always linked in the description box below, and also there's a link to my Amazon store. You can go over there and um, use that link to buy things off of Amazon, and it helps me by giving me a few cents when you do that, and then I can use that money to buy more art supplies and stuff like that to show on my channel. So I decided I wanted the monoprint to be behind the girl and I had already glued the girl to the tag so I just got a different tag. I have a thousand of these. Well, you know, I'm probably down to maybe 900 now. I don't know, maybe maybe less. And um, I cut out the whole thing so now I have a much thicker piece of paper to glue down but I just put the monoprint first, put the uh, image on top that's now the thickness of the of the manila cardstock and then I have this other monoprint that I wanted to use a couple scraps just to make it more interesting visually and I put a couple torn scraps on there from that monoprint so that covers the prompt monoprint <laughs> I have used monoprints so now I've used a copy I've used monoprints the next step number three is stamp and I'm going to use that one in a couple different ways. The first one is that I have a postage stamp that I'm going to glue on to my collage. And it is a picture of someone named Little Mo who is a tennis player. And I looked this up to find out more information about Little Mo. That is Maureen Connolly, who was a winner of nine Grand Slam singles titles in tennis, <coughs> a competitive tennis player. Um, in 1953, she was the first woman to ever win all four Grand Slam tournaments in a year. And then, sadly, in 1954, her career was ended by a horse riding accident in San Diego where she fractured her tibula. And ultimately, that was the end of her professional tennis career at the ripe old age of 19. <laughs> so, um, interesting person. I don't know why she's on the postage stamps. I'm imagining that they had some some different people in that series. I don't really know, but I received obviously the canceled stamp in the mail on some sort of a, some sort of, I don't even know what I received it on, if it was happy mail or something else. So then the other thing I'm doing is I'm stamping with a rubber stamp and I'm using some pigment ink. Uh, the color for the challenge is platinum and platinum to me is kind of a combination of silver and gold. So I mixed detail powder in silver and gold together. And then I stamped these rectangles, which are a very angular shape. And 
then uh, emboss them with that mixture. It still just kind of looks like silver, but to me, platinum looks a lot like silver unless you compare the two together. And I don't have a product that's the color of platinum. So uh, I decided to not use the, um, the next one, which is bleach. Uh, that was the step four and instead replaced it with the wild card angular. And my, my shapes on this are all pretty angular with the exception of those curvy ones at the top got squares and rectangles and then of course I stamped the rectangles and I decided to highlight those angular shapes with a blue Posca pin by just going around them and um, just highlighting them for the prompt angular which is was the wild card replacing uh, bleach so then to finish this tag up and make it a little bit more interesting I decided to make the image the copied image look a little bit more painterly by painting over the top of it. <coughs> and instead of using acrylic paint, which I have done in the past, you, I'll, pr I'll try to remember to link something in the iCard where I'm painting over a picture with acrylic to make it look more like you, you know, painted it instead of just glued a, a picture on there. This time I'm using um, Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons, which is a watercolor product. And I'm scribbling the watercolor pigment onto my scrap of deli paper and then picking it up using a combination of water from the water tank brush and some matte medium to make it a little bit more uh, smoothly blendable and permanent. So that's what's on the plate up there is some fluid matte medium. And then I'm just coloring, adding in, uh, some more color to her, her skin and face. She was, the, the photograph, I mean, the copy was pretty pale. So I think she's probably an Afri African-American woman. I'm not sure, maybe Latino. And I just thought she needed, you know, we need to pump up the color a little bit, especially because the background's also, I mean, it's all pretty much blues, but it's bright. And she just looked pale against it. So then I, also color her shirt and her hair in the same way um, with Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons. I love this product. I just, I adore them. They're my favorite. So um, I think they're made in Europe somewhere and you can purchase them on Amazon and I'll be sure there's a link in the description box below that you can go purchase them. So I'm going over the hair with uh, the darkest color of brown I have. And then I add back in the highlights with the golden color that I have there, the kind of ochre color. And then also a little bit of light blue when I, um, I haven't put that one down yet, but it just kind of gives uh, the hair more interest, fills in some of the holes where I didn't want to cut around the hair because that's annoying. Can you imagine trying to cut around those little spirals? <laughs> so there's, it was on a blue background and so some of the light blue was showing. I just covered that with the color to make it look more solid. I gave her some red rosy cheeks and lips and just generally made the picture look more like a painting and less like uh, a glued on picture which was my intention. So the Pick a Stick Challenge, in case I didn't mention, is a Facebook group and you can go and ask to join using a link in the description box below. Or if you want, you can just go to Facebook and search Pick a Stick Challenge and you'll come up with it. Just remember, if you're asking to join, to please answer the questions that come up because we won't accept you if you don't, unless unless we recognize your name or something from being a frequent commenter, or commenter on my self or Peg Robinson's channel. Otherwise, if you don't answer, we won't um, we won't accept you because we're preventing people who want to use the group as a place to advertise for themselves, a place to spam, a place to you know, post commentary about stuff. We do, it's all about Pick a Stick Challenge and that's all about what it is. There's nothing else in there. Just um, challenges and photos. So you can share your artwork over there. So the next thing I did was to put the tag on a dark blue background. I sometimes like to have that edge around it and I like to, to cover up the back 
where it might not be very pretty and I had torn the back a little bit and then I punched the hole and added some fibers to the tag and then now I'm just adding some words using my brother P touch label maker and it says everyone needs a hero with the idea I was thinking about maybe this woman is ha is a tennis player and her hero is little Mo so that's that's how this tag went. I added a little bit of highlight with a white Posca pen. And um, what else did I do? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think so. So I'm also going to do the ATC challenge. And that is coming up next in the video. Just a little bit of fussing <laughs> before I do that. Oh, that's right. I needed to add some shadow <clears throat> around the edge of the girl so that she blends in a little bit more. So I just used some of that leftover pigment off of my deli paper and my water brush to do that. So yeah, that is my July 2019 Altered Tag Challenge from the Pick Stick Challenge. And here are some photographs. The photos always look so much nicer than the colors in the video because they are much higher quality and um, yeah there you can see the platinum angular shapes okay now for the artist trading card challenge so the first step is bleach but before I can use any bleach I need to have some color on my card this is 140 pound uh, watercolor paper cold press and it's been cut in a three and a half by two and a half inch rectangle, which is the size of a trading card. Also the size of a, a, a baseball card that you could trade or a Pokemon card or something like that. That's the idea of artist trading cards is they're the same size as those cards that we traded as children or played with as children. Um, some people still have, still collect baseball cards and things like that, even as adults. But, um, I'm adding the color using the, the uh, Neo Color 2 crayons again because they're still sitting on my desk. And then I'm using some bleach to make some patterns, some drippy patterns. Now this isn't straight bleach because I didn't have any. This is actually my um, all-purpose cleaner with Clorox. The Clorox all-purpose cleaner that I have in the kitchen when I get... Uh, when I'm cutting fish or chicken or something on the counters, I like to spray them down afterwards with uh, this type of cleaner to make sure that I get, get rid of all the germs. You know, the germs are nasty and I don't like them, so I have to get rid of them. So I drip that on there. I let it drip in one direction, then I let it drip in another direction, and I heat it with my heat tool to dry it and also that... that the process of the heat makes the bleaching portion of the event faster and uh, I don't have to wait. I don't have to sit around and wait. <laughs> so I bleached out the color in those little lines um, going different directions with that bleach, um, bleach kind of cleanser. You could do this with regular bleach, you know, laundry bleach works great. It also works on colored card stocks and papers. You can bleach the ink out, like splatter it and bleach the ink. It's, it's a fun technique and there's a lot of things you can do with it. But I just was interested in making a background pattern. So then to continue that pattern, I'm again adding more drips with the pigment colors again, um, using a watercolor brush, scribbling them onto my deli paper and then picking them up with wet watercolor brush and letting them drip down the card. And I, I think it looks really cool. I, I haven't done a background on, on something in this specific way before, <laughs> and I like it. I think it's a cool background for my ATC. So I use the same colors as I put on the background to begin with, and then, you know, washed out with a watercolor brush. And once all that is dry, I noticed that I have this piece of used washi tape from a Happy Mail 
that looks like exactly the same colors as I used. I'm like, I'm going to use that. I, I save that washi tape off of people's packages if it's at all savable because I like to reuse things. And um, I don't have that specific washi tape myself, but it was stuck to one of my uh, scrap containers that I have on my desk where I just put all my scraps and use them later. And I just stuck it on there, added it, um, glued it down in the back a little bit. And then added some black Posca pin uh, on the edges and also went around the whole card with a black ink pad to um, color the edges because I like having borders on things. It makes me happy. So then back to the color platinum. Remember we were talking about that earlier. I said I don't have a product in my studio that's that color. But I think that platinum is very, very close to metallic silver. So I'm using my silver Posca pin. And I'm just kind of going along the edges of the lines and accenting them with the silver pin to um, add the platinum color. I also at the end off camera use it as splatter, um, but I closed the camera before I finished the last couple things. So I'll just tell you what I did. <laughs> um, next step, illustrate. Illustrate mean, means to draw. Um, draw a picture or you could also use an illustration for this step um, there's other other ways you could use the word illustrate but I decided to just draw something so I drew a very simple flower on a scrap of deli paper that I tore off that piece that I was using earlier I used my black fine tip Posca pin these are acrylic paint pins in case you guys don't know Posca pins are awesome I love them and drew that scribbly fast flower, colored it with the same colors of the uh, water soluble crayons, and then I blended that with my water brush, cut it out, and then again I did not want to use the last um, prompt, which was symmetric. Although flowers are pretty symmetrical, mine's probably not that symmetrical because I was just it's a scribble flower. So I decided to just uh, use the wild card again, which was monoprint. And I used a monoprint to make the leaves. I cut it, cut them out from a monoprint scrap that I had. So I glued all that down using a glue stick. And then I add, ba add back in some highlights and things with Posca pins. I also off camera added a word bloom using my brother P touch again, but I did it after I'd already closed the camera off and added some silver splatters. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and this challenge for the month of July. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below, subscribe if you haven't already. <clears throat> I would really appreciate that. And you can share this on Pinterest if you'd like to or something like that. So here are the photos and that's it for me. Bye-bye.